You're listening to Legends Library. Now, here's your host, Lisa Mountain and Kyle Rollins. Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa, and you're listening to Legends Library. We are a podcast dedicated to the Legends line of the Star Wars universe. And we have a guest with us today. It's a bit of a different episode. Uh, so I would like everyone to welcome Catherine. She's the executive director of the Legends Consortium. So thank you for being here, Catherine. Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> so could you just, you know, tell us a little bit about the consortium before we get really into it and like where yeah. it started from? Yeah. So this started from a group of people who came together. We realized that we had a good amount of event planning experience between us and we all really loved Legends and we were looking for a place to gather and celebrate that. The fandom itself has kind of um, decreased a bit over the years. You know, it's harder to go to a convention and uh, find other people doing Legends costumes or find artists who have Legends art available. And we wanted to just bring everything together in one place to really celebrate the fandom. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so listeners, you may have remembered that I've mentioned, you know, this con before. Um, originally, we had a kind of a different group, but then we evolved to something much better and stronger. And we have mentioned this together um, before that we've got like this really amazing, strong team that I'm just so happy to be proud of. And like both Kyle and I are on board with this. And like just to have a Legends con, just all yes. Legends, is, <laughs> is, it's the dream, you know? So we're finally living the dream and I'm really excited for, for it to happen. And and Catherine, like being behind you is really fantastic because Catherine, everyone has actually experience in space. So if you could go <laughs> a little bit about that and just like prove how cool you are, because uh, like yeah, none of us yeah. have done any space work. <laughs> so my day job is I'm a planetary scientist. I am a Mars geologist. I've spent the past five years doing camera operations for both the Curiosity and Perseverance Mars rovers. So I take lots of, pic lots of pictures of Mars. I listen to the scientists every day about what they're interested in and what's currently in front of the rover and help make science happen That's so in cool. space. <laughs> Tell us about a moment where like it just totally wowed you that you were in space. Oh man, I mean, that's every moment. You know, <laughs> you, you open up your browser, you know, you log into work and the, the first thing you see is this new Vista from Mars that, you know, depending on how early you're logging in that day, maybe five or so other people have seen before. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, every day is a brand new day. Uh, the Perseverance mission has been especially exciting. We're working our way up a river delta on Mars. Um, <laughs> so, and it's, you know, it, it's just so perfectly preserved because everything is dry there and there hasn't been a lot of geological activity other than just wind driven erosion so mm -hmm. we can just roll our way up this delta and get a perfect stratigraphic history that's so cool yeah i love it <laughs> i imagine wow i like i'm just got lost in space for a second there <laughs> through your description so cool ah where else are you gonna like is there any other kind of planets you guys are looking at eventually or is it mostly about I mean, mars there my my particular expertise, I guess, um, is Mars. There's a really exciting mission coming up, uh, the Europa Clipper, which mm -hmm. will be flying past Europa and going into orbit around Europa is a moon of Jupiter. I was going to say moon of Jupiter, yeah. Yes, moon of Jupiter um, that has a lot of water. And then it's also very close to Io, which is another moon. And Io is the most uh, volcanically active body in the entire solar system, mm -hmm. as far as we know. And so it is spewing all of this stuff onto Europa, which is really tasty for bacteria and microbes potentially. Oh, cool. um, so Europa is probably our best chance of having, you know, life off of Earth currently within our solar system. So, so you know, yeah, you have water on the moon. Jupiter is providing enough radiation to create heat. And then Io is spewing all of these nutrients on top of that. So mm. perfect storm. Yeah. 
I just like looking at like planetary for its you know its namesake as well. Like Europa and Io were both lovers of uh, mm-hmm. Zeus. You know who's Jupiter? So like that's yeah. where you kind of get all these names. That's why I'm like I know that one. <laughs> yes, yes. Suck my I... hand, poor woman. <laughs> yeah, I um, I think I don't remember if it was Hera or uh, the ro- the Greek name that's totally escaping me right now. But they they named one of the Jupiter probes that. Oh, Juno. Juno, yes, yeah. Juno. Yeah, the uh, one of the the Jupiter probes is named Juno, and I get a kick out of that because it's just circling Jupiter, being yeah. like, "What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? doing? Huh?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. come on, Zeus was a dirty rascal, and he was. couldn't keep his pants up. He turned he into couldn't. swans. He turned into like livestock, whatever. Uh, it didn't matter. Golden, if the woman like, was whatever. A rain of gold at one point, I yes, believe. Yeah, yeah, he did yeah. a golden shower on a woman, got her pregnant. I, I, like... had, my, I had my Percy Jackson phase. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. <laughs> what's What's cool about you know Greek mythology? It plays a lot into Star Wars. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with like the Legacy series, but they they yes. kind of liken like Luke and everything to like Heracles and. In both. Legacy series. Yeah. Oh, or like Legacy of the Forest, where it's like Luke oh, Skywalker yes. and Jason, and yeah. So, um, and it's kind of like Jason is like Jason of the Argonauts, and you know, so. Yeah. But we're going off topic. Sorry. Yes. This is what happens okay. when you, you start talking Greek mythology in Star Wars. Like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, let's do it. Um, yes. That's a different episode. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I was, oh, you should come on an episode for that. We'll do all yes. Greek, all Star Wars. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but today we are here for a bit of a different reason. So, listeners, uh, now that we're bringing this convention, you know, we're actually we got it booked. We have a venue, um, and we're here to talk about it today. And we're also kind of pleading to you as listeners uh, to give some donations to help us get this going. Uh, yeah. We have people interested. So we have some authors, and Catherine will go into that in a, in a little while. And you know, I'm excited for them. Uh, but again, we, we need some help. So this is us asking you today to support us. Um, everything that if you're to donate to the campaign that we're going to be talking about at the end, um, I'm going to offer the opportunity. If you donate, send me an email, legendslibrarypodcast.gmail.com, and I'll put an extra entry into the Heart of the Jedi uh, book that I'm going to be giving away. So you'll get an extra run into that contest for that and some other things we'll we'll talk about it at the end but yeah Catherine so Catherine has an amazing presentation because she is ever prepared (laughs) (laughs) yes all right so legends con all right so um if you haven't already heard we are coming to a galaxy near you if near you is Burbank, California, uh, <laughs> September 9th and 10th, 2023. We've booked the Marriott Convention Center, which is a great venue. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited. This is finally coming together. Mm-hmm. So about me, um, my name is Catherine, hello. Um, <laughs> I come through this uh, through more of a cosplay background. I am currently on the Revolution Command Council and I'm the local director for my local Saber Guild temple. Um, and I'm also a member of the 501st Legion and Dark Empire. I've been doing these clubs for 11 years now. Um, and I've been involved in leadership for many of those years. Um, so I'm very familiar with working with Lucasfilm um, and like as a fan and playing nice with them for their policies for fan events. <laughs> um, I, it's, yeah, I, I've just, I have a lot of experience in that area so I can help us do this in a manner that does not get us a cease and desist. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, we don't want to get Yay. scared. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my favorite costume for those of you who are joining us on YouTube um, is Mara Jade, which you can see here. And I love her so much. <laughs> what got you into cosplaying? I mean, I always did like extravagant Halloween costumes with the help of my parents. Um, my mom sews. So mm-hmm. when I was little, like my Halloween costumes were a protoceratops or a dragon and <laughs> crazy things love like it. that. Yeah. Um, it's so funny because like I, I pulled up the... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I pulled up those Protoceratops pictures like a while ago and my whole family was just like, man, like 
we remember that looking like a lot better than it looked like now <laughs> we look back on it and we're just like oh like I thought it was way cooler than that yeah um but I was like eight so you know mm-hmm. um but yeah and then how I found the like major Star Wars costume clubs in particular is uh my cousin well second cousin once removed or something like that we're related um <laughs> she she is a member of the file first so I found okay. about about these clubs when I was like 16 or so and waited somewhat patiently two years to turn 18 to be able to join <laughs> um and yeah I started off with the generic Jedi and just have not looked back since then that's so cool so yeah. thanks to your cousin you got into it Yes. What got Thank her you, into it? Do you know? <laughs> I don't know, actually. I mean, other than just being a nerd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not entirely sure how she found it, but I mean, the clubs have been around for 20 years ish at this point. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but within these clubs, um, I have done some cool events. I, we, during the height of the pandemic, we really wanted to do something to help out because these clubs are all charity based for those of you who aren't familiar with them. We do a lot of work with organizations like Make a Wish, Children's Hospital, um, and you know, everything from that side of things to like local schools, libraries, et cetera. Um, and at conventions, we usually raise a lot of money for some local charity. And mm-hmm. when we were at the height of COVID, our members really wanted to do something to help, but our way of, you know, making money conventions was not happening. Um, and so the person in charge of the rebel legion bill holmes um he was like well let's do like you know a good old-fashioned telethon but like online um and everyone was like what are you talking about bill but it's actually it's, it's a cool <laughs> idea that he came up with if we had a webathon um and the first one i was not involved with but then the three after that i was the director of because that's just the story of my life um <laughs> i yeah Hey, I immediately I was like, Catherine, yeah, she's doing it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and you're like, yeah, no, that, no. That's, and I said, too bad. <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically what happened as we, like, as our group evolved. It was just sort of like, oh, yeah, you know, like, I went from like, yeah, I'll help out, you know, like, I'll help you guys make contact with Lucasfilm, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, and now I'm in charge. I did not <laughs> want this, but that's okay. Um, I'm happy to do it because I want this to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, I um, directed three webathon events, two rebel reads and one rebelthon, uh, over 48 hours of video streaming content. Mostly that was made up of interviews with various Star Wars professionals, including lots of authors and artists and other, you know, expand universe types, um, which was so much fun and got me the opportunity to do awesome things like interview Matthew Stover, which was a dream come true. And he's amazing. Um, that was so much fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm so and- I it, him. it was so good. Good. Um, and we also raised well over $25,000 for UNICEF and Save the Children um, for their like critical aid projects during the pandemic. For UNICEF, it was mostly their vaccine efforts. And for Save the Children, it was for um, helping kids get a hold of like laptops for virtual learning. Uh, when that was a thing, because, you know, if you don't have that yeah. access, there's a problem. Um, so there were super fun events and brought us, you know, a lot of, I was working with Lucasfilm Family Relations throughout all of that, um, got to know some people there pretty well, and just generally how to run an event uh, in their good graces. Mm-hmm. So yeah, bringing that experience. Um, and then the actual convention experience I have when I was a senior in college, I ran a queer comics convention at my university. It was super fun. Um, We had about 200 attendees and over 20 artists and writers from throughout the US and Canada. Um, And for those of you who are joining us from YouTube on this, this is a picture of my Ferris Olin costume because he is my favorite gay Jedi boy. I completely rushed this costume to get it done in time for celebration. So there are so many things wrong with it that I need to fix, but I love Ferris. Um, so yes. Um, the tragic character. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this will be the second time that I've founded a convention. Um, and the first time went off really well. Um, the convention still goes on today, like 
five or six years later gosh how long have I been oh. graduated from college yeah um and yeah like I just I like the best compliment that I received from that was one of the professional artists told me that it was better organized than a lot of the second and third year like professional conventions that she went to um and I really hope to bring that energy <laughs> into Legends Con as well where you wouldn't know that it was done by volunteers and you wouldn't know that it was a first year convention yes. because everything is just going to run We're so smoothly we, we got this guys like <laughs> yeah yeah um, so then the rest of the team, uh, Lisa, I will let you take that away. Yeah. So here's our team guys. There's a couple of people who don't have their photos in here. Kyle, uh, Michael, Kyle, Kyle <laughs> <laughs> who currently has influenza, poor boy. Um, but so we have Patrick here in the jean jacket. He's also an editor of Supernatural Encounters. Uh, Corinthia, she's the bottom photo. She does the Sith internal, um, empire forum on Star Wars or on Facebook and the forums chapters. I don't know. I don't know that website, but we'll we'll post all the links. Uh and then another Catherine, she is part of Culture Slate. Um and then Catherine <laughs> in the middle. Uh Swartorisa, she is known for her Knights of Old Republic uh YouTube channel. So guys if you want to check her out if you're into gaming, she's the one to follow. And She's got, amazing. <laughs> yeah. And we got Punch It Chewy. So these are our designers. So the fabulous logo that we have and the artwork of Mara. Uh, well, actually, it's not Mara. It's a cosplayer. Uh, yes. So it's, you can't technically have Star Wars characters. <laughs> yes. It, but that's that's part of, part of our agreement with Lucasfilm is that it is cosplayers and not the characters in yeah. costume. So exactly. yes, it's it's based off of me and my friend Austin in his Revan. So yeah. yes. <laughs> and then there's a photo of me in my casual motorcycle attire. Uh, mostly because I didn't know what photo to send you. <laughs> <laughs> like I have either it's like me with cats or fashion photos. I don't really I know. I mean cats are good. Yeah. <laughs> we, we we discovered like among our leadership group, like there's a bunch of cat lovers here. Yeah, so we all basically own cats. Patrick, yes. I think. <laughs> yeah. But Patrick so, likes cats. Yeah. My my cat my cat approved of Patrick. So oh, that means good. he's good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. And then Kyle, like I said, his photo's not here. Um, but who is a member of Legends Library and then also an editor of Supernatural Catters, which by the way guys he finished yesterday. They finally finished the edit yesterday, uh, which has killed him. Um, <laughs> he, he told me today, he's like, okay, guys, today is December the th Thursday, 28th. He had 29th. 29th. Oh, God. <laughs> 29th. Uh, he's like, I haven't eaten since Monday. And, and I was like, why? Because you're editing? Like, why? What do you like? I'm like, please just order some takeout. Like, yeah. Uh, so. Grub hub, whatever. Typical yeah. Kyle. So. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I'm picking up I'm, some weird like scratching sounds. I'm looking forward to Kyle like rejoining the living. Yeah, and... me too. Yeah. Uh, I've been missing <laughs> him. So it'll be good to see him again. Yeah. Also in, in my photo, you can see a little bit of baby Yoda right there, which who I like to yes. bring along on my motorcycle trip. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Amazing. So, yeah. So and then there's a couple other members. You're you're saying potentially Bill Holmes might be joining. Yes, us? yeah, Bill. Bill will be involved. Bill just, you know, has ten irons in the fire as yeah. usual. Um, for those of you who don't know him, he was the Legion commanding officer of Rebel Legion for like ten years. Um, he has even more contacts within Lucasfilm and experience running conventions than I do. Um, he's a huge fan of Legends. Um, he has so many Legends costumes, like Imperial Knight, um, Borisk Failia. Because he's the one person in the world who loves Borsk Felia. I like um, Borsk too. Like I love to hate him. That's why I like. Do you Boris. do you love him enough to dress up in a fursuit for it? Like never. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. <laughs> I love wow. Bill. Um, but yes, once once his life calms down a little bit, he's definitely going to be helping us out. He's already been helping me out on the side, kind of with stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, he'll be involved, and then uh, my friend. Ryan as well. He's here in Los Angeles. Um, he's also part of the costume clubs and he works in Hollywood. So he's going to help us with like acquisition type things for the area because he knows literally everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so being like, you know, hey, where do we go to get our signage printed and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and, and one thing about this con, guys, we were kind of looking at it that it wouldn't just be always in Burbank. Like we're going to look around different cities in the U.S. Um, 
you know, we're probably not going to go in international because we don't have the funding for that unless we do it in Canada and they'll set up everything, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I don't want to do. Um, <laughs> so, you know, if you guys kind of sign up for the co like the coffee, you have a potential opportunity to pick what city we might be going to in the future. So, you know, we'll talk a bit more about that uh, coming up. Yes. Yeah, so our goals for this convention, um, we talked about this a little bit already, we just really want to create an event that is going to foster a positive and inclusive environment for our love of legends. That's something that has been lacking in recent years, and that's really what dri is driving us to put this together, is just to make our own space to love legends. Um, and we also want to support the creators of Legends content mm -hmm. and celebrate their work and support fan content creation as well. Um, that's something I was talking about a little bit earlier, how like it's been harder to find, you know, new stuff that people are doing with Legends. So really, you know, bringing, creating a place for people to, you know, br bring out stuff that maybe has been in the closet for a few years yeah. um, and just be a fan. Yeah, like right now, the only real spot for that is Joe Bongiorno's website. Uh, StarWarsTimeline.net, where he actually, you know, publishes all these obscure authors and forgotten articles and, you know, stuff that's been pulled from the StarWars.com website that's just not available anymore. So he's kind of like the mecca of all this information. So whenever <laughs> I need to, like, find something and I instantly find it through him, I'm like, oh, Joe, like, you really saved our butts with legends. <laughs> so, like, yeah, it's just, there's just so much of a need for it. Uh, yeah, but I think, I think there's a lot of... I think there's a lot of different places for that. Mm -hmm. um, so like the goal is, you know, like bring everything together. Like yeah. um, within the costume clubs, the flagship eclipse within the 501st is pretty much entirely legends characters because that was created as like the expanded universe detachment of the 501st. Mm. Um, and now that's also, you know, the new books and comics characters, but you know, it's a ton of Darth Nihiluses and Mara Jades mm -hmm. and, you know, et cetera. Um, so yeah, you know, like just really like creating a place for all these groups to come together that, you know, might not be aware of each other. So that's something I'm really looking forward to the, in this yeah. is, yeah, making those connections. And supporting the creators too, you know, that's, that's something that, yes. you know, we really want to be focusing is, is the ones who aren't part of the franchise anymore, but, you know, we love their work. Like obviously Matthew Stover, you know, we adore his work. Yes. But he's legend. So, you know, let's get Matthew Stover there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please. Um <laughs> if he's available, if he's willing. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'd I'd love to he was so much fun to talk to in the interview that I did with him. Um he'd be great to have as a guest. I think everyone but, would be in that room. <laughs> yes, yes, we're gonna we're gonna need the Standing big panel room, room for that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which we that brings us to our next topic of yeah. when and where. Um, as we already said, September 9th and tenth, twenty twenty three, and the where is the Airport Marriott Convention Center in Burbank, California. It is a, I'd say it's a very large venue, like for a first year event like this. Um, and it just so worked out that was like the best for us both like financially and logistically and all that kind of stuff um because logistically uh because it is right next to the burbank airport which is going to be very beneficial for those of you who are coming in from outside of california because yep. you get to avoid lax um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've seen but, that in the movies but it's just insane yeah. it is it's wild um but yeah we're gonna have three panel rooms um so, you know, the, and there there will be one very big one that we can use for, you know, if we get anybody like Matthew Stover that will be standing room only. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of really good space for us. Um, mm -hmm. We've started working on the floor panel already. And I, I really think that like, we're going to put together a really amazing show in this space. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, and so what are we going to put in that flow plan? Um, <laughs> we've already started reaching out to vendors. I hit the streets of Burbank a couple weeks ago and talked to some comic book stores, bookstores, collectible stores, gaming, um, all those sorts of things that have Star Wars things available. Um, 
we're also talking about reaching out to like some chain thrift stores. Um, that was something that was super awesome at Celebration Chicago is there was one of those like big chain thrift stores had a booth there that was just Star Wars stuff, like so much of it. Um, and like a lot of it was, you know, like 90s, early 2000s era. Awesome. Um, that, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, and, you know, and tons of books and comics too for just like dirt cheap prices. Um, so fingers crossed that we can get that there too, because that was probably my favorite part of Celebration Chicago in terms of vendors. Yeah. Um, and we would love to bring that yeah. back. Um, so with a bookstore, I went to one today, by note. Uh, yeah. And I asked her, I'm like, hey, do you have any Star Wars books? Because I always do when I'm in a you yeah. know, bookstop, as any of us would. And she's like, do you mean for kids? <laughs> and I looked at her, I'm like, uh, no. that already like said you don't have anything, right? <laughs> and she had yeah. like, uh, like just like an encyclopedia of characters and I was like okay. no I no. don't need that <laughs> yeah yeah I'm like, um, there's, there's, it's, it's adult content you know that right <laughs> yeah yeah well the of the of the stores that I went and talked to um mm -hmm. there's one comic store in particular that had like several boxes of back issues of oh, Legends wow. era comics and the guy that I talked to there seemed interested um so yeah we're really looking to you know bring bring as many of those together as we can um mm -hmm. and just have that that stuff available for purchase um help you guys find you know the missing parts of your sets um and you know we've been throwing out some other wild ideas too of like oh yeah i wonder if like there'd be a tattoo parlor who'd be interested in you know coming to set up shop and is that even feasible with you know regulations and whatnot mm -hmm. um but yeah Fun, fun stuff like that, um, as well as licensed vendors, uh, both small scale ones that are local to the California area. There's quite a few actually um, that do like really cool like jewelry or art prints. Um, and then also lar larger scale ones that are, you know, very relevant to the Star Wars books and comics. Um, if they're interested in coming out, we would love to have them. Um, and also of course, an artist alley which we definitely are looking to have a good artist alley. Mm -hmm. um, shoot us an email at legendsconsortium at gmail.com. If you are an artist or any of these other things who would be interested, we're going to get that, those info packets out pretty soon. Great. Yeah, and um, exhibitors, uh, since you know myself and several others involved in this are so plugged into the costume clubs, we're going to be inviting them, um, hoping to do some Sabre Guild performances as well. For those of you who aren't familiar with the group, that is the Lightsaber Choreography Group. Um, I've done a show as Mara before and it's super fun. Um, I probably won't have time to do it here, but I know that like, as like I was writing that show, you know, you have to like write it for the common denominator audience. So you have to write it kind of like, okay, like if the audience was listening to this, like they're probably going to think she's an inquisitor and like, so it makes yeah. sense to them, you know? Um, Who's the and, redhead like, girl? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and like the same thing with Revan, you know, like when we're writing a show with Revan, we just have to kind of like, you know, make it so that it would make sense to the audience of just that, oh, like Revan's a big bad Sith, you know? Um, so people are, it's, it's exciting to have the chance to have an event where you can write things that are like deep nerd, you know, mm -hmm. um, not have to, not have to try to dance around some stuff. Um, and other like really high profile fan works groups, like we'd love to have Wikipedia come out. Um, those sorts of things that just contribute so much. Um, it'd be great to have them. And we are thinking about having table space uh, for sale for promotion of fan organizations or fan films, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a really fun way to you know, promote, promote your group, promote your fan works, that sort of thing, if you're not selling something and wouldn't want to be part of the actual artist alley. Mm -hmm. I thought having like a podcast table there too would be good for yeah. everyone who wants to have there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be fun. Um, and all, all proceeds, part of our agreement with the, the, the guidelines that Lucasfilm sent us um, is that all proceeds have to go to a charitable cause. So mm -hmm. we will be, um, we're, we're meeting very soon actually to narrow it down to a couple top charities. Um, 
And then the final de decision will probably um, be something that is part of our coffee rewards. So yeah. stay tuned for that little part mm. of this. Yeah, we're hoping, you know, we're not biased at all, but to have Peter Mayhew as one of the, the charity foundations. Yes. So. yes. <laughs> yeah. Peter Mayhew Foundation is great. Um, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're amazing. We, as long we, we've, we reached out to them um, already through somebody who is involved with leadership there. Um, and yeah, there's like pre preliminary interest. Um, and yeah, I think in, in any case, we'd want to have them there as a exhibitor um, mm -hmm. to promote their cause because they just do such great work. And Angie Mayhew is amazing. Absolutely. Oh, miss them. Yes. Oh. Um, but yeah, what, what you can do at this convention, uh, we plan to have the you know usual setup of author artist panels and signings as well as fan panels. We plan to have a costume contest and then Lisa, uh, what yeah. is it that you're planning? <laughs> so you guys may not know this or I may have briefly talked about this before, but I have a, a long history of fashion modeling, uh, you know, for, in my younger years. Um, I've done over 100 fashion shows, many fashion weeks and things like that. So I thought, why not continue kind of what they were doing at Celebration? I, you know, I'm not meaning to copy it, but I just love the idea of doing, you know, haute couture uh, kind of Star Wars clothing. So it's not just, you know, let's dress up as, you know, Mara Jade, no offense, uh, but like, <laughs> let's make normal clothes look like something that Mara Jade would wear, but that'd be what we're exhibiting. And, you know, and just, you know, so we're, we're asking people to, Start your designs now uh because it'll probably take a little while and we'll have more details about you know how like who, like winners and if there's compensation and things like that but yeah i think it'll be an exciting part of the show um and then hopefully i'll be the mc of the event and we'll get lots of people entering yeah yeah and um also in terms of like other shows and stuff we're talking about uh, the possibility of a fan film festival mm -hmm. that would be really fun um probably you know the shorter side of fan films but being able to have that running for people to enjoy um mm -hmm. and then also an evening party mm -hmm. that will also be something that is in kind of the lisa corinthia sphere of yeah. things i believe yes <laughs> yeah corinthia definitely she's got more of this going but you know we're gonna have things like star wars themed drinks and you know just like a, a general fun time to to enjoy and meet other on and not just be about shopping and listening to panels so. yeah yeah more mingle time yeah um yeah and we're also planning to do some like interactive type things too we have a in the current you know type of form of the floor plan we have a room that's dedicated to gaming and activities so tabletop gaming or card gaming um, but also the possibility of doing things like a swap meet for books and comics or painting miniatures or doing crafty things with damaged comics, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, we're throwing ideas at the wall at this point, yeah. uh, but with two days of convention uh, to fill with programming for that room, there is definitely room for There's gonna any be a lot. suggestions. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be yeah. a lot of things. So, yes. I like what you were mentioning about like using damaged comics like what were some of the ideas for that yeah um so this is something that i've done a fair amount with actually um because i got my hands on a water damaged copy of attack of the clones um and water damage doesn't really mean anything if you're going to put decoupage on it because you're going to get it wet anyways um so i've made a bunch of magnets with that um just cool. by taking like the glass uh beads jewels i don't know they're like an inch ish in diameter mm -hmm. um they're meant for like putting floral arrangements together um I think I know and, what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah yeah and you can like uh glue on the you know little cut out of the character um mm -hmm. to the back side of that and then like attach a magnet to the back of it and you have a really nice fridge magnet with <laughs> a liqueur on it um i've oh. also done some bookends that i um, I took the the library scene from Attack of the Clones. I took those pages um, That's cool. and turned that into a couple bookends. Um, and then a friend of mine was, who is like obsessed with Padme um, <laughs> was wanting some boxes, like magazine boxes decorated for all of her Star Wars Insider collections. So mm. I did two 
um, Padme themed boxes decoupage with like different cutouts from the comic. Um, and then another one that was using tissue paper to like gradient um, the colors of Padme's lake dress for the oh, one cool. in the middle of that set. Yeah. So um, yeah, people do all kinds of stuff with decoupage um, and comic books are really good to use for that because the paper is pretty thin. Mm. Um, and yeah, like if you have comics that have been water damaged or, you know, fire damaged or whatever, you know, as long as the cat didn't pee on them, um, there's no reason <laughs> to throw them out. Like there's stuff that you can still make out of them. Yeah. All my books are usually sealed up. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, like things happen, like cats happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, again, you know, not, not cats. Um, but, well, I don't know. Like if the cat clawed, you know, half of it, you know, to pieces, you could still use the other half, but, um, considering you yeah. have a cat that eats your shoes, you know, people just have to be worried about it. He's anything. not my cat. He's my parents' cat. Oh. I'm, I'm home for Christmas right now. Yes. <laughs> I am coming to you live from my childhood bedroom. Um, and yeah, he, I made the mistake of leaving some sandals sitting out and he ate them. The cat's a dog. No, this, this is not, this is not the cat that is the dog. Yeah, we're, we're getting off track. But yes, I, I have, I have an orange cat who is a cat running dog software who walks on a leash and yeah, he's <laughs> wild, but that is not who chewed my shoes. <laughs> well, no, cow's good kitty. My, yes, yes. my cat Creamsicle, who the big fluffy one, uh, uh-huh. Google always identifies him when I take photos. It's like, here's pictures of your dog. And so I have a dog a little, no. of him and I'm like, is a cat, Google? Like, <laughs> He's just so poofy. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we love cats. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and you know, spoilers. Um, with that charity thing, we're definitely looking at one that is cat oriented yeah. because yeah. kitties. I mean, hello, cat ears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, back on track. Um. First, before we are able to donate our proceeds to a charitable cause, first we need money. Um, so mm. we have a coffee set up. Um, if you're not familiar with coffee, it is something kind of like Patreon, um, but a little bit different. Yeah. Um, there's well, reasons. What's that the we other one? Mm. Uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> something we're also going to do a Kickstarter. Um, mm. But for now, as we're you know, like building up our audience. Um, we wanted to use coffee because with Kickstarter, it's like an all or nothing fundraiser. So if we Mm. set a goal and we don't meet that goal, then we don't get any of the money. Um, so first we need to build up a following of people so that we could actually meet a goal on Kickstarter. Um, so yes, for coffee, either one-time donations are possible, or you can become a sustaining member with a monthly donation. Uh, right now for our one-time donations, we have it set up where if you donate $15 or more, you get one of the purple stickers that is shown here for those of you joining us on YouTube. Um, with 25 or more, you'll also get a bookmark along with that sticker that is being uh, designed by the Punch It Chewy Press people. And 50 or more gets a bookmark and a sticker pack. Um, and the other two color options that you see, there the red and the gold. Um, those will be the other stickers for the sticker pack. And $110 or more is a bookmark, a sticker pack, and then you'll also receive a code that can be redeemed for a convention Mm -hmm. ticket once we get those set up. Yeah, so that covers, what, a whole day? Have we decided the, is it a packet deal for that one? Yeah, the okay. the hundred and ten. Yeah, you you would get you would get the the weekend. Like yeah, sorry, yes. that's what I meant. Yeah, yes, yes, okay. yes. that would be yeah the weekend weekend ticket along with the bookmark and super pack. So yeah, that's a pretty good your, deal, guys. Just saying. Yes, <laughs> yes. This this is your first first chance to get tickets. Um, mm-hmm. and we'll we'll start mailing these rewards out in January. Um, once you know holiday travel and holiday. Bills. Postal service chaos is over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's been yes. the storms, too. That hasn't really. Happened. Oh, man. It's been brutal lately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It's warmed up today, and now I had a mosquito biting me while we've been recording. I was like, no. where did this mosquito where come did you, from? How did you survive? I'm like, there's snow outside. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy weather, yeah. But that's yes. pretty amazing. I love the stickers. Um, yes, I love I love our logo. We um, we we put a lot of thought into you know because it needs to be something that is not intellectual property of Lucasfilm, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and you know talk, talking to them being like okay is the word legends copyright no okay no. <laughs> is the word expand universe like are those words copyright no okay um so that's why in our social media you see a lot of legends and expand universe and you don't see us saying star wars yeah um oh my channel gets it we're legends library like you know, we're yeah. all legends yeah yes um but yeah like you know using using a typeface that is reminiscent of the legends books and the starburst behind it which is reminiscent of a couple of like the era mm -hmm. um insignias that you know used to be yeah. in the front cover of all the books um you know putting something together that'll really tie together you know and give you that legends feel mm -hmm. um without having anything that is not our intellectual property exactly <laughs> It, it honestly yes. it looks like it like you would just open up one of your regular copies of books and be like oh there it is yeah yeah and it could be with a bookmark oh. mm -hmm. ah, <laughs> yeah there you go um but yeah once again um that is coffee.com co uh slash legends underscore con mm -hmm. so that is our one-time donation rewards uh we also have the option for monthly support at the dollar tier, um, that's our smuggler level. Um, and once again, we have our, you know, non-denominational, <laughs> uh, non-IP drawings uh, coming up with these for mm -hmm. fun as well. Uh, so smuggler, yes, it's a dollar per month and you'll receive some behind the scenes updates from members of our planning team. Uh, right now up there is my more like background for me. Um, more like some cosplay photos and like more discussion of the previous events that I've done. Um, a link to the interview with Matthew Stover that I did. Uh, so that's sort of like, a, that's our lowest level of monthly support. And then we have our rebel level, which is $10 a month. Uh, this is my favorite of the little like drawings that we I did for it. One. Yeah, because it's just it's Tikal. Like it's yeah. not it's it's what you see in A New Hope, but yeah. it's definitely not copyright because it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Exactly. So you, you can't <laughs> copyright that. Um <laughs> so at this ten dollar tier of Rebel for ten dollars a month, in addition to the behind the scenes updates, you'll also receive a monthly legends themed sticker or bookmark or other small item, basically anything that can fit into a regular sized envelope, mm -hmm. um, which allows us to have this be like the same price for everybody no matter where you are in the world um so like if you're like lisa and you're in canada um you will also receive these things yay. and yes yay <laughs> uh <laughs> and then our highest level of donation for monthly support is the night level um and this in addition to the behind the scenes updates and the monthly little reward um you'll also get access to exclusive posts and polls where we will ask questions um, like, you know, prioritizing what kind of events we might want or prioritizing like what type of content creators. And eventually, you know, like if we narrow it down to a couple of charities and we need help with some like a tiebreaker vote, mm. um, you know, having that be up to the vote mm -hmm. for the people at the night level. Mm. And then very far in the future, um, if we are, you know, as we're, deciding on a future location for this convention for a coming year, that will also be something that is there. So $24 a month, um, that really, that will really help us. Like we, in order to make this convention all that it can be, you know, unfortunately money makes the world go round. Um, mm -hmm. And that'll help us pay for, you know, right now what we're paying for is the down payment for the venue, but eventually, you know, any, any, you know, as money comes in from ticket sales and from the vendors paying their fee in order to, you know, sell at the convention, um, the money that comes from these, like the coffee and the Kickstarter, that's just going to help us bring in more cool guests. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want the convention to be legendary, please donate. Yeah. Jazz hands. <laughs> Jazz hands. <laughs> yes. So again, Legends listeners, uh, you know, we're imploring for a little bit of support here. Uh, I know it's kind of out of the ordinary. We spent a whole episode talking about a fundraiser, but this is just the reality to get our, our dream going. So so thank you for staying, obviously, uh, tuned in to this episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, where else other than coffee that you can find us online? Um, we are on Instagram, Twitter, and Hive at legends underscore con and then we are on facebook and tumblr at legends consortium 
And you can also email us at legendsconsortium at Mm gmail.com or go on our website, legends-con.com. And we have a link tree that is just legendscon, all one word. Yeah, (laughs) Mm. we're all over the internet. Come find us. Yeah, definitely join the Facebook group, guys, because then we can have some discussions in there as well. It's it's a Facebook page right now. Yeah. Well, we'll do we'll do a Facebook group eventually, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or a Discord group. It takes it takes a lot of effort to moderate yeah. a Discord group or a oh, Facebook group. That's that's why we <laughs> haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. But um yeah. yeah, as as we get, you know, we we are open to more more volunteers. Um if you are someone who you know has experience in group moderation or event planning or PR and have a level head on your shoulders. Um, <laughs> yeah, and after a vetting are... process, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, like the more the more help that we get, um, the more feasible it'll, be, feasible it'll be for us to mm-hmm. support something like a Facebook group or a Discord group. Because exactly. uh, that just takes a lot of effort. <laughs> it does, yeah, it does. So, as well, you know, any listeners, if you want to get your art featured in this con, this is this is the site to go to. Uh, so it's legendsconsortium at gmail.com. So you can contact Kathy that way. Um, so if you, you know, artwork, fan videos, whatever you're working on, just, you know, just send an email and we'll kind of work some ideas out and see what happens. Yep. Yeah. I'm excited. Yes. I'm, very excited. I'm so excited. This is, this is going to be really fun. I mean, it's not like I haven't planned my outfits out, but I have. <laughs> 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 I'm I'm still debating of whether or not like like I have to get into costume at some point while I'm there. It's just I'm the question of like how feasible really how feasible of it is it it's gonna be for me to like do like leadership duties while also Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be making an Izan Izard kind of pants oh, suit. Man. Um so I wanna look fierce and red. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Are you gonna do the hair for it too? I was thinking of just getting some like drip earrings, like Okay. That are like diamond drip and just, just be natural blonde. Yeah. 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 Cause like they'll they'll know who I am. We're a legends yeah. con. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyone yeah. else would be like, nice red suit. <laughs> yeah, nice Mrs. Claus, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Are you Crow <laughs> Deville? Like <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I like Mrs. Claus. Yeah. Honey far from it. Like <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no. And can we talk just a little bit about the guests that we have sort of kind of lined up interested? Yeah, um, I don't want to name names since we haven't like done anything official yet. Um, but we've we started reaching out to guests mm-hmm. of the people who are local to the uh, Southern California area. And we have a book writer and a comic writer who have both expressed interest when we reached out to them. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really exciting. These are both of these are not people who typically do the convention circuit, um, mm-hmm. which is something that I really do want to like have that be a priority. You know, also obviously when people who do the conventions all the time, you know, like Timothy Zahn be amazing. Um, mm, it's not but him, <laughs> it's not him. No, he's not local and he does lots of conventions. Um, mm-hmm. But these are these are people who don't typically do um, mm-hmm. the convention circuit. So I think it'll be a really special opportunity to have them do panels and signings mm-hmm. um yeah one, one of them that I was talking to was like yeah you know like if anybody's interested in me doing a signing I'm like if anyone's interested, yes yes we're yes, already like, dragging you, you to the you, table you wrote like, something extremely popular <laughs> extremely popular like people will want we're all to just do handing him markers or she markers <laughs> yes yes <laughs> uh, I will give one hint only that we have covered this book on the show, whoever the author is. So mm-hmm. it, it, it's exciting. Yes. So yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll 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 give a hint too that um, one of the two people was part of the Rebel Reads um, webathons, ooh. and it was very, <laughs> it was really great to do that interview. Um, mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. So. Yeah, I'll I'll let somebody else do the honors of doing the panel. I realize they're gonna figure it out. And let me with it. <laughs> no, <laughs> there was. I don't think that one's even on our YouTube because oh, really? that was the, that was with forty eight hours of content. We just haven't gotten it all up on the Revolution YouTube, even mm-hmm. though it's been so much long. Like afterwards, because it's just so much <laughs> yeah. to try to like break the interviews up. Um, but yes, yeah. Hope we'll, we'll have. 
once like the holiday season has settled, that's kind of, you know, like put a pause on things for us. But after that, we will mm-hmm. have some art, some guests to announce soon. Mm-hmm. And I know that Joe Bongiorno, he's expressed express an interest in going regardless if we book him or not uh yes. you know <laughs> fingers crossed because i would love to see his panel um yes. slash moderate it but you know i'm a little biased yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah guys like it's i'm just excited i'm i'm very excited for it i can't stop thinking about it all the time i mean yeah it's it's always kind of on my mind when yes. we're, we're talking star wars so so again, everyone who's who's tuned in for this long episode, you know, I, I appreciate you sticking around and looking at it, even if you don't donate, but you can just share like the the information to other people that you think might be interested in going. Just spread the word around. That's what we really are looking at you to do is just talk about it, share it, like it, yeah. and get us more attention. So Yes, please. Yes. Mm-hmm. Follow our socials, uh, do reposts if it's a platform that does reposts. Yep. And yeah, just help us get the word out, please. Yeah. And, you know, check us out on Twitter while it exists. While it exists. <laughs> um, yeah. We have a Hive. If Twitter goes down, Hive is kind of one of the Twitter replacements. And okay. there's been a really cool Star Wars fandom on there that popped up. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I like Hive. Well, Catherine, before you go, I will ask you to, uh, as I always ask guests, to share your five characters who you would pick to be your, your Star Wars A team. Yes. All right. Well, to no one's surprise, Mara is going to be <laughs> the leader of this A team um, because she's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that definitely, like, that has to that affects who else would be on the team because it has to be people who would work well with Mara then. Um, and she can. I mean, from the way that I'm appro- like the logic okay. that I'm approaching it from, <laughs> yes, it's like okay. Well, then who would work well with Mara? Mm-hmm. Um, because she can be a feral cat. Um, Mm -hmm. which is part of why I love her but yeah Um, and the second person I'm going to add to that is Jaina um, just Mm. because you know we have to have her apprentice as part of this I love Jaina she's amazing (laughs) Um, and then we're going to like swap eras around um, Mm. and I would throw in Quinlan Voss Mm -hmm. Um, I think that he and Mara would really get along if they you know were ever in like the same era um <laughs> they're both like you know kind of flirt with the dark side a little bit yeah. um both you know very competent able to get things done mm-hmm. uh so they'd be fun and then for even more era mixing um also Satil Shan oh. um because I think that again she would work really well with that team um and it was some like in one of the like Facebook groups, somebody posted a verses that was like Mara versus Satil. And I was just like, oh gosh, like they wouldn't fight. They would just like, it's like, it's a good thing that they're kept thousands of years apart from each other because <laughs> otherwise they would just take over the galaxy. Like those two. Mara like, for that, Empress, yes. <laughs> yeah, like that, that would be trouble right there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so there's those four. Um, and then... The fifth one is going to have to be Ferris just because I love him so much. Um, And I honestly think that he would get along well with that group just because like he is so straight lace isn't really the right term, but like he's very like efficient and like, you know, we're going to do this like by, you know, this particular way kind of thing. So I think that he would actually jive really well with Mara um, in that respect of just like, you know, getting things done. Um, so yeah, that's that's my A team is Mara, Jaina, Quinlan Voss, Satil Shan, and Ferris Olin. It's a great team. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is that they're doing, but whatever it is, I think they can handle it. Kick and yeah. butt, that's all. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, saving, you know, people who have their farms being raided by some drug cartels. Yeah. Yes. Whatever yes. A teams do. <laughs> yeah. Taking taking out a hut cartel or yes. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Pirates. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Well, one day, like, I do really want to cover the some of the classic books, uh, Jude Watson, of course. And I would love to have you on for it. Absolutely. You're the I, person that I think about when it comes to that content. I will gladly ramble for a very long time about all of Jude Watson's characters. <laughs> and Yaddle. Like, we needed to cover yes. both now. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, I mean, like, a lot of them, like, she did so much for like expanding on characters who you know we saw in the prequels like Adi Galea Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, really like creating a story for them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love those books. That, that like, that's, I'm of the right age that like those books are like the peak Star Wars nostalgia for me. Like I remember, you know, seeing them at the classic book fair and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I remember classic book fairs. Oh wow. <laughs> that takes me back. <laughs> yeah. A simpler time. <laughs> yeah. I can't really remember what I got then. Goosebumps, maybe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As one would. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, again, Catherine, thank you for getting this con up and going because yes, you are absolutely. the backbone of this. Um, <laughs> and again, like I said a thousand times, I'm excited. You guys should be yes. excited. I'm going to be there. So if you want to come talk, I know there's a lot of listeners in Texas. That's not far from California, guys. So get in your cars and start driving. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone ask me if I was going to take my motorcycle down and I was like, no. <laughs> That, that would gonna, be a trip. It's like, <laughs> I'd be gone for like two months. Like, <laughs> like, no, I have clothes to bring. So, yeah. So. Who's going to feed your cats while you're gone? Right? Yeah. Like, they'd be yeah. so mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the life we lead. Cats and Star Wars. <laughs> we have cats in Star Wars. That is okay. Just like as another aside, that is like one of the things that I am most sad about about the Legends continuity not continuing is I want to see Angie, uh, not Angie, yes. Alana Solo as a teenager riding Angie the Nexu into battle. Yes. Like that is my dream, honestly. <laughs> that whole story, I have to say, I know we're going off another tangent, but like the like the, the moment she gets angie and like just yes. like the, the slaughter at the zoo oh my god uh, <laughs> i had such a hard time reading that like i yeah it's one thing about star wars that i just really disagree with that they always just kind of hurt animals and some things and i'm yeah. like why like yeah. why like just no <laughs> just but I, I love i love what alana had to say i'm just like well you know yeah you killed you killed the mom so therefore we have to take it yeah. like <laughs> han and leia are like okay we've got a granddaughter oh. and a nexu yeah. now yeah, yeah now <laughs> now we have like it's not just a house cat it's a nexu it's like a big bunch of teeth going <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah she's beauty she's grace she'll eat your griffing face yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh yeah you're so right i wish we had that uh, but if you have a fan fiction of it, maybe you can introduce it at the con, yeah. guys. So. Or fan art. Please, fan please art. make that as a print. I yes. will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And if you guys, yeah, paint anything Mara Jade, this person here will buy it. So <laughs> Yeah, that's like, I go to conventions, like, you know, like in my Mara costume and like somebody is like, oh, hey, I have a lot of Star Wars art over here. And like, I go look and I'm like, do you have anything with Mara? Yeah. No. Okay. Hi, hello. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's another conversation we yeah. don't have time for we don't have time for my <laughs> don't worry none of us are uh, yeah we're okay <sighs> well again we love all things star wars but we are we're a legend audience, so we all i don't uh, love kylo <laughs> <laughs> i i just like the scene where he just beats up the elevator like i said because i'm like <laughs> you know i get the inner anger like i can appreciate that moment <laughs> that's it like if no Moving away from yes. this. So again, yes. listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you, Catherine, for joining us. Yes. Uh, if you can just share like one more time where to get a hold of you. Yes. Um, so you can email us at legendsconsortium at gmail.com or on Instagram, Twitter, and Hive. We are at legends underscore con. And on Facebook and Tumblr, we are at Legends Consortium. Mm-hmm. And if you want to check out her interviews with Matthew Stover, check out Rebel Reads on YouTube as well, guys. Yes, um, the Re Rebel Legion. We'll sorry. take that'll be within the within the Rebel Legion videos. Yeah. There will be those some sorry. of them. <laughs> and yeah, don't forget, you know, any donation you do, send us an email at legendslibrarypodcast at gmail.com and I'll put your name again in the hat for the the book contest that we got going on if you're listening to the the X-Wing series. So again, Catherine, thank you for being here. And may the force be with you. See ya. <laughs>
This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for informational or entertainment purposes only. Official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights to Disney and respective copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Legends Library podcast, otherwise indicated. Legends Library, there's always a bit of truth in Legends. Oh. <laughs>